So I wanted to start this video with a bit of a visual demonstration. Here you're naturally looking at a galaxy, but it's not the galaxy in the background. We're not actually looking at the spiral galaxy, because that's not the main topic of the video. We're looking at something right there, right in the middle, basically orbiting this galaxy. And that's actually another galaxy. A type of a galaxy we currently refer to as UDG or Ultra Diffuse Galaxy. Something that, if you were to look at it in a telescope, would potentially resemble this. This is the famous galaxy known as NGC 1052 DF2. And though the mystery of these diffuse galaxies is still basically unresolved, today we're going to be discussing something new, something even more mysterious, and something that, I guess, adds to the mystery, making it more mysterious and perplexing and enigmatic. Okay, I'm running out of synonyms here. You get the point though. Researchers behind the recent paper discovered something new and unexpected about these types of galaxies, which means that we basically have to talk about them once again. And so, oh wonderful person, this is Anton, let's talk about UDGs once again, discuss what's happening here and how they were potentially formed, and discuss why this is, to some extent, is extremely important. But I guess let's start with the main definition of what UDG actually is. It's essentially an extremely low in luminosity galaxy, a galaxy that's barely visible, with the first discovered back in 1984. And actually it took many many years for telescopes to get good enough for us to start discovering more and more and more. And turns out that this is actually an entire new collection of galaxies we really don't understand. Mostly because, unlike a typical galaxy, that will usually contain certain features, a lot of stars, various types of star-forming regions, and generally some kind of a connection to the mysterious dark matter, pretty much every UDG discovered so far sort of kind of looks the same, mostly because there's really nothing to see here and it lacks luminosity compared to a typical galaxy, but much more importantly, they actually seem to contain entirely different properties on the inside. And though the lack of luminosity in this case can be easily explained by the fact that these are ancient stars, potentially billions and billions of years old, with no new stars, no blue stars being formed, based on discoveries from the last five years, especially in 2018, various researchers have now confirmed that they come in at least two completely different types. Actually, possibly more than two, but there are definitely two at least. The first type of UDGs seems to almost entirely consist of dark matter. With the best known example of this, being the galaxy known as Dragonfly 44, explained better in the video in the description, that basically suggests it's an extremely massive galaxy, possibly even as massive as the Milky Way, but only seems to contain 1% of luminosity or 1% of visible stars compared to our own galaxy. And in this case, a lot of these measurements are usually done by collecting the data about various global clusters. By finding a large number of these clusters around the galaxy and by then calculating their speed, it becomes possible to determine what sort of a galaxy this is, and potentially even discover its age, its approximate shape, and of course its overall mass. And quite a lot of similar galaxies have been discovered in the famous Kalma Cluster, a very large galactic cluster 330 million light years away from us, where surprisingly the distribution of these ultra-diffuse galaxies seems to be extremely similar to luminous or visible galaxies, suggesting that they might have actually formed as a result of some kind of an environmental change, or potentially through galactic collisions and, and the stripping of gas from galaxies, with basically most of these galaxies potentially forming as a result of some kind of a gas stripping when they either passed through the cluster or orbited some kind of a nearby galaxy, basically removing all of the gas and all of the visible matter or visible stars, leaving behind essentially mostly dark matter, making this to some extent dark matter galaxies. But that galaxy I mentioned in the beginning, NGC 1052 DF2, is basically the other type, the type that seems to be almost the opposite. This was actually discovered by the same authors from previous studies, but here they found another UDG that's practically dark matter free, once again measured by evaluating velocities of globular clusters. And so here this galaxy doesn't just have almost no stars, it also almost has no mass at all, it's as diffuse as it gets. And these types of galaxies are even more difficult to explain and currently don't really make a lot of sense. And though some propositions have been in regards to basically these being failed galaxies or failed Milky Ways, or once again some kind of a galactic interaction, galactic stripping, or some other gravitational interaction with something else, because many of these galaxies have also been discovered 
in the middle of nowhere in various galactic voids, and some contain a lot of dark matter, yet others contain practically nothing, instead of explaining something, it actually created a major mystery for a lot of cosmologists, because it sort of contradicted how scientists believed galaxies form. These types of diffuse galaxies, especially such extreme galaxies, were never predicted by any simulations or any cosmological theories. Yet here they were pretty much everywhere. Including around our own galaxy, the Milky Way. This is actually one of them, known as Sagittarius Dwarf Spherical Galaxy. And it's not the only one, there are quite a few. But now we have an even bigger mystery discovered by the recent study. And they call this one Nube. Spanish for cloud. Okay, I guess it's Nube. But I mean, it's written Nube in English. Okay, I'm not sure. Let's just call it Nube because it's a new mystery. Once again, challenging a lot of our understanding of cosmology and potentially challenging what we currently believe about dark matter. And in this case, scientists used three separate telescopes to confirm its existence, including using Green Bank Telescope to determine the redshift, suggesting the galaxy is about 350 million light years away from us, or as you can see from here, is moving away from us at 7500 kilometers per second, with a total mass of approximately 400 million solar masses and the age of about 10 billion years. But that's just the mass of visible stars in this galaxy. Because once again, Green Bank Telescope was then able to find its total mass, including the mass of various types of hydrogen gas and dark matter. It seems to be about 25 billion solar masses, or essentially presenting this galaxy as really massive dark matter galaxy. Way, way more than assumed. But what makes this galaxy unusual is just its sheer size. It's actually not a dwarf galaxy like many others. This galaxy is at least twice as large as the Milky Way. But in comparison to the Milky Way, seems to have a really small overall mass. Actually, the total mass here is equivalent to a typical dwarf galaxy. And so unlike previous discoveries, this is just a huge amount of stuff spread out across a very large volume. But like some other similar galaxies we've discovered previously, interestingly, the shape here appears to be regular, symmetrical, and actually implies that this galaxy might have never actually experienced any galactic collisions. In other words, even though there might be a way to explain a diffuse galaxy if it went through some kind of a galactic collision that shredded it apart, here the evidence suggests this galaxy was born completely by itself. This is not a tidal galaxy and not an aftermath of some collision or some galactic interaction. Basically just another very unique UDG that currently doesn't make sense. And the previous galaxies, like the ones discovered in the Coma Cluster, could be explained as failed galaxies, or galaxies that passed through the cluster, changing in the process. Nothing like this seems to be happening here. This galaxy was really just formed by itself and became like this over time. And that is a bit of a problem. A problem for modern theories of dark matter. A lot of modern concepts suggest that dark matter must be some kind of a massive particle. And all of the simulations that would produce galaxies as a result of these theories, such as for example the famous Illustris project or the more recently completed Flamingo project, would produce various dwarf galaxies that would be very compact, very small in size, and though some of them were actually diffuse, they would still be tiny in comparison to Nube. Nube. Cloud. I mean this galaxy. This is just way too large, way too diffuse, and does not make sense when it comes to the current dark matter models, except for maybe one model. The one we discussed previously in the video you can find in the description, that tries to interpret dark matter as not just some kind of a massive particle, but potentially an extremely low in mass axion-like particle that presents the idea known as fuzzy dark matter. Here, dark matter actually starts to act as a kind of a wave function and not a particle. And this fuzzy dark matter model does actually explain some of these galaxies pretty well. But it's not an idea that's accepted by everyone, even though axions are believed to exist by a lot of different scientists. But these fuzzy dark matter models could explain a lot of problems with modern dark matter theories, and of course explain what we're seeing right here as well. And so for all we know, these unusual ultra-diffuse galaxies have a potential to actually solve a lot of cosmological mysteries, potentially explain how dark matter works and what exactly it is, and more importantly, help us understand the universe as a whole. Because by discovering these barely visible galaxies that seem to be quite unique and seem to possess very strange properties, it presents us with a very unique anomaly 
that only has one potential explanation. And so if we find an explanation that fits all of them and can explain all EDGs at once, it's most likely going to be the answer we're looking for. But at the moment, it's still not clear what's happening here and how these galaxies are possible, why some of them have dark matter and some of them have none, and more importantly, how exactly they formed. But we'll talk more about this in some of the future videos with some additional discoveries, hopefully in the next few months. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, check out some of the previous videos on the very similar topic in the description below, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.